I was on a ski trip, going down a pretty nice run off to the side of the mountain. Picked up too much speed, it was a little bit icier than I was used to, and lost control. Took a spill, um, I ended up hearing two pops. Uh, one of them was my ski coming undone, and the other one I think was the ACL breaking. ACL injuries are becoming an increasingly prevalent problem, particularly in our middle school and high school athletes. And that is a very vulnerable population at that age. An anterior cruciate ligament injury in any circumstance can be very disabling for the patient. It destabilizes the knee and leads to ongoing future problems. Currently, our best option is to do something called an ACL reconstruction. We take a graft from somewhere else in the knee and use it to replace the torn ACL. Patients not only have to rehabilitate and recover from the ACL surgery, they also have to recover from where the graft was taken. And many patients go on to get early arthritis in the knee. We now know from long-term studies of the replacement type of surgery, which is done across the world, that in the young athlete, we have a 20% failure rate, re-tearing of these grafts. Because we wanted to try to figure out how to get the ACL to heal itself, we looked at how other ligaments heal successfully. In order to get the torn ends of the ligament to heal, we needed to provide some type of scaffolding in the gap between the torn tissue ends. What we found worked best was using a sponge made of simple proteins that are found in the ligament normally, and then adding a patient's own blood to that sponge. The sponge can then hold that blood in place and then gradually be replaced by the ligament as it heals. There are a number of advantages to repairing a ligament rather than replacing it, not the least of which is the, the accuracy. Uh, you're putting the ligament back exactly where it came from. The benefits of replacement may well give better outcomes long term, and we hope that we will be able to do better if we simply repair the anterior cruciate ligament rather than replace it. Once we had this idea, we first tested it in animals to make sure it would work. And we found that when we did this technique, not only did we see that the strengths of the repair were similar to that of ACL reconstruction, we also saw a lower incidence of osteoarthritis developing. We were really excited and encouraged by the animal results, that made us think we really want to move towards patients in clinical trials. And to do that, we worked hard with the FDA for about three years to make the process of producing the scaffold as safe and as effective as possible. We were able to get FDA approval to do our first in-human trial in October of 2014, and the trial actually opened in February of 2015. This initial trial was called the BEAR trial. BEAR stands for Bridge Enhanced ACL Repair and it's the term that we use to describe the scaffold being placed between the torn ligament ends to stimulate healing. The trial involved 20 patients, 10 undergoing the new surgery and 10 undergoing a standard ACL reconstruction. Corey Peak was the first patient to receive this new experimental surgery. When I heard about Dr. Murray's research, then the trial at Boston Children's gave them a call. I met with the research team and they walked me through the scientific base that they had for doing this trial. And the major motivation factor for me to decide to do the, the BEAR trial instead of the standard ACL reconstruction surgery was that I thought the, the trial might lead to a better surgical outcome. Dr. McKinley is the surgeon for all of the patients in the BEAR trial and he performed Corey's surgery. We're running over track, you're running. In the first three months after Corey's surgery, we were all watching him carefully, both his medical team and his physical therapy team. We'd seen it work well in the animal models, but we really didn't know what would happen in a human patient. We really weren't gonna get a peek at that until his three-month MRI. That would be the first time we would see it inside his knee. On the day of Corey's MRI, I was in the operating room doing cases myself. So I waited till I got out of the operating room and then I went down and looked at his images. Okay, let's see. So here, this is coming in. There's the blood vessels and the fat. Here's coming in muscle. Here's his PCL. <gasps> There's stuff there. Look at that. Oh my goodness, it looks great. I can't believe it. I'm so happy for him. That's just fantastic. I'm going to have to just look at this all day. As the MRI images started coming across the screen, we kept seeing pictures of healing tissue in the notch, right where the ACL was supposed to be. 
And that was just an incredible experience because we weren't sure what we were going to see at all. And to see something that looked so promising was just very, very rewarding. His physical examination is excellent, the knee is stable, he has good range of motion, and the MRI is very encouraging. Since Corey, all 20 patients have been enrolled in this first bear trial. They've all successfully completed their surgeries. All of the 10 bear patients have gotten through their three month time point and had their three month MRI and all of them have healing tissue where the ACL is supposed to be. It's been a really interesting journey since I started this project back in 1989. To now see this technology going into patients and to have some promise of good results is, I can't think of a more rewarding career path to have taken.